Okay, Paul, uh, what do we call about economics this year? One of the most important concepts in economics is you're a going concern if you believe you are going concern. Going concerns have debt. Going concerns are called going civilizations. And what this whole conference has been about is trying to talk yourself into believing that Ireland is a going concern. But you're not going to liquidate yourself tomorrow and to think like a going concern when you have external influences that are trying to impose a liquidationist state of mind on you. So for me, the most interesting thing, seeing it literally on the ground, uh, is the dichotomy between going concern thinking and a liquidationist state of mind. And what I'm coming out of this, particularly here on a Sunday afternoon, is a sense of optimism is that you are a going concern if you believe like you believe that you are one and act like you are one. So for me, it's the, the essential existential uh, nature of a society of believing in itself. Is what's coming out of it. Economics this year, Stephen. Oh, this is my first trip to economics. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a quite unique format. I've been to about 20 conferences this year. And this is the only one that had economists and um, policymakers and bankers and comedians all in the same place. Um, it's quite unique. And I think there's something quite culturally significant about it as well. We're, we're in a very dark place uh, economically, but one of the great things about our Irish people is that they tend to have a very dark sense of humor. So having the comedians there to, to sort of prick that sense of doom and turn it light, lighthearted is actually quite empowering because it, it, I think people can see that even when things are really, really rough, you know, there, there, there's there, there's some fun and humor to be had, and so while they're being entertained, they're also being informed, and I think that's really, really valuable. Um, you know, so so people learned a lot about Greece, they learned a lot about Iceland, a lot about Germany, and um, they also learned a lot about the social issues. And I think for me, that level of engagement with a very, very engaged public, anyway. Um, you know, it's, it's actually pretty rare. It's not, you know, normally it's sort of the sage on the stage ranting out PowerPoints, and, and, and this was far more interactive than experience. And can you think of one single thing that you learned down here that you didn't know before you came down? Um, last night's panel was all about debt and default, and I expected it to be, you know, a very aren't the banks bad kind of discussion, and in fact, that wasn't what happened. What happened was people started saying, we need a vehicle to express our collective frustration, and that vehicle doesn't exist yet. And uh, I, I, I personally took a lot of, um, I, I took a lot of heart from that because it, that is something that you can build on, as something that's very, very useful um, if it goes anywhere. But I had never heard that expressed in that way before, and it was it was from a member of the audience um, who I got to talk to afterwards. It was really interesting uh, uh, talking that way. So, so from that point of view. My eyes were open to a, a different possibility, and I think that that's as much as you can expect from any conference. Thank you. Karen, how have you enjoyed kicking out this? Sorry, I'm not rolling against right. That was a preview of the question. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Okay, so, Kieran, how have you enjoyed economics this year? Yeah, this is the um, first time I've been to this event, and I have to say to you, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, well, maybe maybe the audience hasn't, but uh, but I've really thoroughly enjoyed it. It's the mixture. It's the mixture of t uh, dealing with serious issues in a sort of light-hearted way, but the, but the most important thing is those issues are discussed, and it it's effective because you know, if you had a one and a half hour presentation with a whole lot of boring people like me around generally. You know, people would have a attention span of about 20 to 25 minutes and just, they just forget it. But, but it, this light-hearted approach, I think it's perfect. I've never, I've never seen it done before. I don't know whether this is uh, unique or, 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 or it's done somewhere else. Because most of the songs I do are sort of deadly boring people like me around. So I think it's been hugely successful. And I commend David and his team for, for putting this thing together.
Uh, second question, uh, can you think of over the course of the last couple of days, what is the single most uh, interesting thing that you've learned yourself coming, since coming here? Uh, well, as you know from the previous panel, I was, I was focusing on, on Ireland because, I, because that was the, uh, the, the discussion point. And I think the most important issue is that I do not think that the, uh, the population over here and annual, annual leaders have actually realized where they are right now and what they have to do. And a lot of people have been saying, well, they're not there yet, but I, I don't understand why they don't understand. I, you know, this I will answer the question, but I'm just saying, I just don't understand it because it doesn't make sense to me. Because something has to be done right now, and you guys have got the leverage to do something right now, and you should do it. The, the, the problem is, is that people seem to not understand focus. Yeah, we, we have this panel, yeah, and I thought the most important point, and of course I would, is using your leverage to do what you have to do. But then we have people talking about social issues. Now, it's, they're very important, but that's not what we're talking about here. We've got 10 or 15 years, people can write books about this crisis or whatever. Right now, what you have to deal with is the crisis which Ireland is facing right now and focus on it. And I think I've learned that, that that is not quite there yet, which is a bit of a negative, but I don't think you have a choice and people will have to take that decision pretty soon. Right. Okay. I'll let you go. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Now, sir? Yeah. You're I'm, good. I'm good to go. Yes. Yeah, I'm good to go. Okay. Bill, uh, how have you enjoyed Kilconomics this year? Uh, the wonderful thing about coming back to Kilconomics is the first time around, it's the first time you've ever worked uh, with a professional comedian. Uh, and you have no idea of what the world is, how you're going to do this interaction. and. You're so nervous about it that you can't really think as much and enjoy it as much. This time around, I really got to appreciate the art of people who are really good at what they do uh, in terms of comedians. Uh, always knew how quick they were uh, and followed, but uh, I've had comedians work with me for 30 minutes before uh, the event uh, to make sure that they got down uh, the subject. And the sense this is the one that really mystified me. We can't see the crowd, but they have almost a perfect sense of what's happening in the crowd, how to move it along, when to put the zingers in, when to go to seriousness. Uh, and that art, I'm, uh, this time around, I'm able to appreciate a, a lot more. And it brings out uh, something that keeps the audience engaged, and engaged in a way you're talking about really serious things and they people enjoy it uh, and are even willing to pay money for it and are happy at the end that they paid that money. So uh, I've been able to appreciate the experience a lot more this time. And can you think of one single thing that you've learned apart from the art of, uh, the art of comedy uh, that you've learned this year that you didn't know before you came out to Kenny? I don't claim to know the art of comedy. I claim to appreciate it uh, more uh, and know that I don't have uh, the skill sets that, and such. So what I've learned uh, most this time around is that there really is uh, still a tremendous resistance uh, among a broad range of the Irish to uh, playing hardball. Right? So, uh, whether or not you believe that a default is the right uh, policy, I actually think it is. Uh, and whether or not you believe getting out of the euro is the right policy, I happen to believe it is. You've got to, to negotiate successfully, be able to credibly threaten that you will default on the debt and that you will leave the euro. So what have you thought of economics this year? That's been great fun. You know, it's. Um, it's remarkable, really. I always think a kill is a bit like a, a child looking under the bed, you know, in, in, in the dark, and you're afraid of the monsters. And when you look under the bed and you see, yeah, it actually, actually is pretty dark and dusty and nasty, but, you know, you actually gain a lot of courage and a lot of good feeling out of actually confronting some of the issues. And I think that's what Kilconomics uniquely does for the people who come here. You know, 
it's not that it builds them a kind of false optimism. I think it just gives them some kind of rational way of really engaging with issues that are often very frightening for them. Uh, and, and once they kind of feel that they can articulate something about what's going on and they can engage with it, uh, it might give them some courage. And I've been really, really surprised this year about the, the you know, the relatively buoyant atmosphere that's that's still here. And people aren't beaten down, and they are still willing to engage, and that does create a sense of hope. And this perhaps the single most interesting thing that you didn't know before that you know now that's coming down here. I think the, the single most interesting thing I, I learned myself at the economics this year was really about the Icelandic situation. I hadn't quite understood that the Icelanders um, hit on a good solution, um, having tried and failed uh, to do all the bad things that we did. So it's not necessarily that the Icelanders were so much smarter than the Irish were. Uh, it's just that nobody would give them the money to, to do the crazy stuff we did. Uh, and therefore, out of that, they were actually forced to face up to the reality of the hole they were in, uh, and, to, and to make everybody else do that as well. You know, we were almost really unlucky because we had a big pile of money that we could shove into the black hole, you know, and the Icelanders didn't. So, in, in some ways, that's kind of liberating because we're we're a bit in awe of the Icelanders. We think, well, you know, how did how did they manage to do it? We didn't. Uh, and it's kind of good to realise that actually these things are often just about circumstances. Uh, and again, you get a bit of courage out because you think, well, actually, you know, maybe we could change our circumstances and maybe we could own up to the fact that, you know, we've tried everything else um, except the obvious thing of saying we actually can't pay the money.